evening uh, councillors, staff and members of the public. Uh, we're here to go through the agenda for the full council of Maxfield Town Council on the 16th of October at Maxfield Town Hall at 7pm. Um, just before I start with the meeting, um, we do have Will McKellar from the City Advisory to uh, give us an update on what we're on the agenda. Um, and also, uh, just some news from myself, uh, earlier this month my chaplain, uh, Andy Williams, has moved to a parish in Preston. Uh, a bit disappointing for myself, but I wish him all the, all the best. Uh, so I'd like to uh, formally introduce uh, Reverend Martin Stevens to Michael's and All Angels Church. Uh, and my chaplain, thank you very much for standing in. Uh, and we'll just open up the uh, council meeting with a prayer. Before I do, can I just, uh, two things, one is to say, uh, it wasn't because of being uh, chaplain that Andy left, uh, in the attraction <laughs> yeah. of uh, the parish up there. Um, and, and you're sitting so far away, have you been to church, sitting at the bank? Um, no, I, I do want to, uh, just as a vicar in the local area, say thank you to the town council for the support they give to the activities in the town centre, and this, uh, this summer with the um, uh, extra activities have been going on. It's been nice to be in uh, in the area, in the marketplace, and just to see all those families turning up and, and others turning up for those. So thank you for the support for that. As I was praying ahead of this meeting, I was um, led to a verse from 2 Corinthians chapter um, chapter 5, verse 19, talking about ministry reconciliation. As one version of the Bible says, that is, in, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Or another version. What we mean is that God was in Christ, offering peace and forgiveness to the people of this world. And he has given us the work of sharing his message about peace. I don't know how much you feel the role of Maxfield Town Council has on global politics. But we know that we're in a broken world where there's fallout and there's, um, yes, antagonism. So I pray for you today as you talk about whether it's car parking charges or um, other business, I'm just thinking of sort of planning applications and the whole way in which people feel they have rights uh, and there are responsibilities. I imagine you see part of your role as councillors as being agents of reconciliation. So can I pray for you, for your business tonight uh, and for the work you do. Thanking God for you. And as I pray, if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end. But God, I do thank you for this town council, for the councillors, for those who've offered themselves to serve our communities, um, giving of their time, their energy, their emotions. God, I pray your blessing on them this evening as they do council business. God, may you speak to them and just uh, delight in their, um, their, their work, their ministry, the role that they have in this town. And Lord, I pray for your supreme wisdom to help them with difficult decisions. for the good of all people and for that ministry of reconciliation here in Macclesfield as, where, as elsewhere. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Well, moving on to the agenda. Uh, agenda item one, we have apologies for absence for this meeting. Councillor Fiona Wilson. Item two, we've got declarations of interest. Any declarations from somebody like? Uh, yes, I'm a trustee manager of Cheshire Council and um, this is Mr. Thank you. No other declarations of interest, thank you very much. Uh, there's no members of the public that have uh, requested to speak or uh, wanted to attend this meeting. Obviously, I've mentioned the comments as well. So, uh, move on to the minutes of the full council from the 24th of July and this will approve the minutes. Councillor Hutchison. Happy to propose that we approve the minutes. Thank you very much. Do you have a second there? <coughs> Councillor Hutchison, thank you very much. 
All those in favour? Any against? Are there any abstentions? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, are there any matters arising from the minutes of the last four council meeting? Thank you. So moving on, we move on to the finance committee meeting. So um, just some notes the meetings. Of the Finance Committee minutes from the 11th of September 2023. Um, and are there any matters arising from the minutes of the Finance Committee? No. Um, 5.3. Um, we need to approve the spending to date for the end of July 2023 of £249,786. As approved for recommendation by the Finance Committee on the 11th of September. Item 6, we have the Planning Committee, so it's to note the Planning Committee minutes from the 26th of July 2023. And also the 30th of August 2023, Majesty. And are there any matters arising from those minutes of the planning committee? No. Uh, item 7 <coughs> is the services committee. Uh, so one thing to action is to approve Councillor Sarah Ben Wake joining the service committee. Opposed? Yeah. to the vote to approve uh, Councillor Bennett Wake joining the services. All those in favour? No, I should carry. Thank you. Uh, okay, item 8, we have community delivery. Uh, 8.1 is local police. Uh, fortunately, again, the second council have a look on the jobs. Um, whoever is confirmed. No, I checked this morning and said that they were working on operations. But I will encourage him to send somebody, maybe somebody else. He did say he would send a report over May um, next week, which I will share with you. So uh, if you have anything you want me to ask him, yeah, I, I think it's worth noting once again um, kind of disappointment that you know, the local police is uh, able to join us this evening. I know that we do know we have quite a lot of questions, and I can see hands up. Um, already. So, did you have a question for us at the committee? No. No. I thought your hand was up, do apologise. So, uh, Councillor Anderson, Councillor Bennett Lake, Councillor Harewood. Yes, thanks. Concerns are about staffing availability. We have a part time PCSO who does a great job, but it's a part time PCSO. Um, I'm concerned about policing levels, the ability to report active antisocial behaviour because there have been a number of nasty incidents in the town centre, a number of violent incidents that have occurred. Uh, and generally, I think we, we would follow that. I would suggest we follow the request that we take the place and involve the Cheshire Police Council to that extent. Yeah, just again to echo that disappointment. You know, I've had my surgery on Saturday and I've had a number of residents complain about pavement parking and parking on verges and um, general sort of issues to do with parking, but also, like you say, the antisocial behaviour in the town centre and so on. We're moving on to towards Halloween and bonfire days, so, you know, what would have expected from somebody to come and make a job done? Well done for being on the beat. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
asking if dealing with mental health patients um, by the police is an initial part of your training from now on as far as we can uh, find out. Thank you. Um, I think uh, if the class I have which we link you to is the uh, Right Care Like Person initiative um, which has started in Humberside um, and has recently put conference, both conferences and learned a lot more about it and all implementing it. This is starting to be implemented in Manchester. Um, this is basically uh, a lot of the duties that police um, can have to get involved in, which is um, people AWOL, rewards, uh, care, um, visits, uh, Section 136 of the Mental Health Act, um, and there's quite a, there's going to be quite a change in how that is policed, um, or not policed, because sometimes it doesn't need to be the police that are involved. I would be quite keen on inviting with a specific question to explain where they're up to in, in regards to the right place, right person, because this is a national initiative and we need to know um, how far they've gone and on that trajectory, because it's quite a big implementation, it's quite a big project, so it would be useful to know that specific question when they turn or if they could answer that in a paper, that would be great. Thank you. Um, just to add to that, I was recently at the police crime panel where the police crime commissioner attends and is scrutinised and he did confirm that Cheshire Police are embarking on right person, right place, or not right, right, right person, care, right person, right care, right person. Um, and they will be implementing over the next six months with the, the various partners that are involved. And I would, I would probably think if you want a strategic answer from the police, a local inspector probably wouldn't be able to give that. So it might be a, a written letter to the chief constable or something similar. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry, Chair, I know, uh, Mr Mayor, I know I've already spoken, but just to, to reiterate, we, we have spoken at Cheshire East about this and the, the concern is, and, and perhaps this could be forwarded as well, um, that there's, there's already, there's operators, call operators, and some, some police people have been quoted as saying, oh, that's not our job anymore. And that is a major concern with mental health because as um, Councillor uh, Council Thompson's just said that, you know, it's really important for mental health act that the police are present on those occasions. So it is concerning. Anybody else um, have any comments or questions that you can pass over to the police? Councillor Washington? I'm quite interested if we got some information from the police about how many of the cases we go out to are actually involved in mental health. So when they're talking about, I'm not saying abdicating that, that but passing it on to somebody, <coughs> you know, who's lined up to do it and what proportion of, of current um, offences that they go to or, or incidents that they go to involve mental health. So we really need to know that uh, to get some idea of the volume. Okay, well, short time that we'll um, pass those co uh, comments, questions on. Um, and hopefully we can get a response to for it for council, if not, uh, on the next for council line for the representative of the police. <coughs> our fingers on that one, I suppose. Uh, so moving on, 8.2 is the Citizens Advice Bureau. Obviously, we've got a uh, report in front of us. Uh, Will, I believe, is going to um, chat to us again. I uh, just want to say, first of all, thank you for attending uh, and thank you for you, you for the work of yourself and the team are doing at the Citizens Advice. Um, it's always great to, to know that the money that we're investing in the Citizens Advice Bureau has been well, uh, well spent uh, to help the, the residents. Um, <laughs> Thanks very much. Indeed, yes, for those that don't know, I'm Will McKellar, I'm Chief Officer of the Sims Advice in Cheshire North, which uh, hopefully you all know, as his main office is in Field on Sunderland Street. Um, hopefully you've had the opportunity to have a look at the report. Um, I think the main, the main thing I would call out from it is that generally there is growth in certainly most of the main areas of our inquiry for benefits, debt, housing, and um, recently in immigration, our growth in immigration.
immigration, well, the numbers are relatively low, but the growth is steady. So we are seeing uh, an increase in uh, the number of people coming to us for advice around immigration. And also uh, relationships, which in, in, in theory covers all kinds of uh, domestic relationships, but in practice usually means domestic violence. And so we do have referral networks. We're working with, um, for example, um, um, My Cheshire Without View, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's been so long since I've been on the front lines, so it's been, been my lofty ivory tower. Um, but yeah, so when, when you look at the numbers, the, um, the reality is that it's, um, it doesn't look good. We're dealing with more welfare benefits, more people with debt problems, uh, and I'd say more, more, more uh, problems with housing. That was the, when, I, when I submitted the last report, that was pretty much what I was talking about then welfare benefits and housing, and it's still on the increase. Um, what I did earlier, but, but I should have, uh, maybe I should have included it in the report, I looked at the uh, report that was submitted uh, for quarter two in 2019, because even still, for certainly for our organisation, um, COVID is still having an issue. The main impact means we lost a significant number of volunteers, and because of the time it takes to train our volunteers, we're still recovering from that. And when I was looking at the numbers for this quarter in 2019, the numbers are still up on that. So we have less volunteers, but we are still dealing with more debt issues, more welfare benefit issues, more relationship issues, um, uh, and more housing issues than, than certainly what we, we have pre-COVID. So, um, yeah, I'm afraid it's not very good news. I'm happy to take questions, but the truth is all the major areas of inquiry are up. Others, some, some are, are not increasing and some stay, stay, stay disabled, but the ones that have the greatest impact on, on our clients are the ones that we definitely are on the increase. Um, there was a discussion on mental health. We um, routinely ask our clients to comment on their own mental health, and 70% of the people that still access our service say that they, are, they have challenges with their mental health. And so we do have specialist mental health um, advisors available to support them. We also have specialists who deal in welfare benefits uh, and debt. And we've recently got online some providers specific support around um, cancer that's funded through Macmillan. And we're just in the process of starting a service which is targeting um, families, young families. So what, um, one of the things that we see is uh, people that have um, a busy uh, and demanding home life, accessing services like ours becomes uh, difficult. So what we're looking to do is proactive and look to engage with people where they can engage with us. But like I say, I'm afraid I'm very good news. If anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to try and answer. Thank you very much, Will. Um, so do we have any questions, comments for Will? Show us another way. Thanks for the call, Will. Um, I thought the case studies were well set and very detailed and gives a really good broad picture of the type of cases that you get. And I think I may have asked this question before, but if you thought you do you do meet and you do support, you say a lot of them are coming for uh, advice on benefits. Is the reason that they're not getting any benefits? Is it because um, they just don't know they're available or is there another reason? Um, for some people, for some people that will be the case, some people, they're, they're, one of the points that um, maybe I should have made is that we have more issues, more problems in clients, that's because clients will come with one problem and actually maybe that's symptomatic of another and then have some other issues. So a client may come to us for example and they may be struggling with their debts, part of the work that we would do is to look at how can we maximise your income. And so in some cases, indeed, we will be identifying debts that, uh, sorry, welfare benefits that the clients themselves didn't know that they were entitled to. But the truth is for a great many of the benefits that they're just difficult to access now. Um, a, a story that I sometimes, and I'm going to uh, tell, is if you go back 30 years, the process for claiming a welfare benefit was a form, it's called the B1 form, and it was maybe 15 pages, and people used to complain about it, said it was like war and peace, but it was a form, and most of it was factual information, and people used to complain about it. 
Now, if someone wants to make a claim for a means tested benefit, they have to go online, they need an email address, they need to get a maintainer account. So, a lot of the problems that people expect, uh, um, experience is the fact that things just pass them by. So, there's the technology, that's, that's an aspect to it. But there's also things like disability benefits, um, specifically personal independent payment, disability living allowance for children, and attendance allowance for people of the retirement age. I think the Department of Work and Pensions is better when it comes to processing and dealing with uh, individual um, claims. But if, you, if you're an individual and you have health issues, one of the things that you maybe you're not going to want to do is emphasise the things that you can't do, emphasise the negative. So sometimes part of our skill is actually helping people represent what is needed on the applications. So it's, it's, it's a range of things really. It is for people who are really entitled to it uh, and it's, it's the technology engaging with the benefit system, but it's also knowing how you represent something as well. So it's all yeah, complex really. Hi, well, thanks for your report. Um, I've got um, just a question about numbers here because um, in, the, uh, in the introduction on the right hand side it talks about 192 in, in a quarter and then that went up to 228 and in the last quarter it's 306. So you've got a clear pattern there of, of providing more information for more people. Um, does that mean that? the people who are seeking advice are having to wait longer to get that advice or if, if that pattern continues then next month you're up to 400 and uh, is that, yeah. does that, yeah. is that um, causing a problem? An easy and a potential um, slippery answer would be no they're not waiting longer and that is true but the truth is that for the last 18 months since we've Again, I'm, I'm not looking to make excuses for it, but it does explain it. We had a significant reduction in our volunteers, and we're, we're increasing that. So as the numbers are increasing, so is our capacity to deal with those numbers. So the waiting times may actually go down, but in truth, if you go back 18 months, uh, 18 months ago, the waiting times were probably longer than they ever have been. So waiting is coming down, but it's still too long. And so what we're in the process of doing is introducing a new way of people contacting us where we're guaranteeing that there will be somebody at the end of the phone. One of the things, and the way that we operate at the moment is that where people can't, where, the, where we can't take a phone call, people can leave a message and we'll ring them back. We, we, we think that's a satisfaction. It, it worked for our program, it worked very well for our program. We had a 30% increase in the clients and it worked very well. But it's not suitable for what we want to do, it's not suitable for what clients want. So people aren't waiting longer, but they are still waiting too long. And we're changing a, a way of engagement to ensure that they don't have to wait anything like as long. So the ideal and all that we're striving to do is that everybody is the only deaf person, a live person who answers that call. Obviously, there are going to be capacity issues, but that's what we're working on. Um, this is probably a very obvious question, but uh, when people approach you and come to see you, do you actually help them fill in the forms and so on? And the reason why I ask this is that I'm chair of licensing, and I find that people who 
uh, have trouble with the forms or when they're being interviewed by staff, if English isn't their first language, they can find extreme difficulty in understanding. Uh, and I just do wonder if you help them fill in the forms. Thank you. Um, our, our first position is to, we look to enable people. So um, what we do is give people the information and the advice to enable them to help themselves. So somebody can <coughs> a complete form and all they need, need is some guidance in doing so, well, that's what we will do. When it comes to many of the forms, though, particularly disability benefits, we do, we, we scribe for them. We would never complete to the point where we sign and may, and hopefully that's not really what you're asking. Do we spill the ink on the page? Yes, we often do. Well, as long as it's within our, our capabilities. If you talk about legal forms, then that very much depends on the form. I, I still have nightmares. I remember uh, um, this happened a couple of times where clients have brought in um, application to the European Court of Human Rights. It comes out in multiple languages and no, we didn't help with that. Uh, but if somebody had come to us with a personal defendant payment, uh, attendance allowance, indeed we would sit down and we would complete that with them. We would complete that for them. Unless all they were looking for was the guidance themselves to be able to go away and do it. But part of that guidance would be to ensure that they knew that they need to fully be able to represent the, the impact of their health problems. And when it comes to issues of uh, language, we, we, we use um, a commercial uh, interpreter service. We, we, we have to take conversations. We navigate our way through that. Thank you very much. Councillor Hyland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do, do you refer to other agencies or do you think you have the need to do so at any time? Yeah, sometimes we would be looking to refer to, for example, to a commercial, um, a commercial organisation, for example, if somebody was indeed and have a legitimate claim to um, take action in court. There's some work that we can do, and it's only work that we do um, help people to prepare for legal action. But then if it needed to be uh, to be dealt with, for example, by a solicitor, then we would help the client identify and make a, an active referral to a solicitor. And what we tend not to do, what we certainly try not to do, is to signpost and that's saying, here's somebody, off you go. Because our own experience, is that um, people can be signposted to an organisation and either they never get there or their getting there is very much delayed. But we also refer and work with other agencies, for example, Agency for Patient Services, the Information Bureau, just drop in on that occasion. And we also work together on strategic, on a strategic level as well, to talk about where our strengths are, what we can do to um, support one another and um, issues like that. So yeah. We, we do refer where necessary. Any other questions or comments? No. Well, again, thank you very much for your time and the detailed report and, and uh, answering your questions. Um, again, you're more than welcome to stay with Megan Peters or um, to go with her voice. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, moving on to the agenda, uh, item 8.3, we have CCTV, uh, so it's to consider proposals in the report um, in relation to the, the cameras that we're looking at uh, installing and purchasing. Okay, yeah, I've just got a question, I think I know the answer, but uh, I'm just checking it. <coughs> it says at the end that we, a one year agreement would cost £35,447.2p and, mm -hmm. and then it goes on to say a three year agreement um, and it's got exactly the same figure so I'm taking it that that is sort of guaranteeing that that will stay at that price for three years with no inflation if it in increases, guaranteed? Yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed and that's how it worked with the last SRA. So whoever, one year, it would probably go up in year two. <coughs> year three years, it's guaranteed. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Probably a very stupid question, this, but there's been some discussion about where the home bases are mm -hmm. for the CCTVs. I've heard references to uh, the under farm, and we have. 
talked in the past about uh, on Park Lane where there were colourful bricks on the side. We uh, desperately need one in Tiddington for the Tesco's underpass. And I've heard that um, there's talk now about the one by the underpass by the railway station, you say, or the Yankee. And also there's mention of um, uh, South Park and of Lime Green. And I had no idea where we would put a CCTV camera on Lime Green. But if anybody can enlighten me, I'd love to know. Thank you, Lord. Um, so what we did is one on the underpass. The underpass next to the travel lodge. Yes. There's one there. That's one of the home places that already has our camera. Mm -hmm. The second place they suggested was Lime Green and they, they want to put it on Burger King because of the amount of criminals they can catch leaving Macclesfield. So that was their suggestion of the two home places. So the cameras We've agreed to buy two, we can buy more, but we've agreed to buy two. The one at the underpass currently will be decommissioned in January, so it'll be too yeah. old. So the idea would be we'd replace one with the current underpass at Travel Lodge, yeah. and one potentially at Burger King, or another home place, but then that would mean that when you want to move it, it wasn't on his desk to be moved, you know, it was already being useful somewhere. And I spoke to CCTV today, the manager at uh, Stuart Hobson, and he says that they have their own electrician now, so their own electrician can go and put them on the lamppost rather than wait for the highways. So he's very confident it will be better. Shall I come back? Thank you. Um, I hear what you say. Uh, I know how vociferous. Uh, Councillor Wilson has been in the past about having one in South Park somewhere, and that seems to have got swiped somewhere and <laughs> ducked away and, <laughs> and not going ahead. Also, thinking back to the four years that I've been around, we were very far advanced for having one in the underpass by Tesco's, even down to Tesco's agreeing to allow us to have some electricity off the totem pole with the price of the petrol, you know? And that seems to have been swiped out now. And I can't really see the disadvantage of having one at uh, Lime Green. I just can't see it. Which, how are these um, um, criminals getting around? Is it by car or walking? Yes, or that's what I'm Push talking. bikes or? <laughs> they were just, that was the road out of town. And so it'd be good to have one there. That's what they, they had told me. So, yep. Can I just clarify the uh, two new cameras are those battery operated? Uh, I believe so. Even though there was discussion about the battery operated. Yes, yeah, they are better cameras, but I think they still need to be hooked up to a bit of electricity. A trickle charge, like, no. like, like the uh, defibrillator. Bases, yeah. yeah. I think they still need right. to be hooked up to a lamp post. Councillor Warren. Yeah, Councillor Richards. Thank you. Um, to further echo Councillor uh, Edwards. Um, Objection really to having one in Lime Green. It seems to me that the only reason to have one in Lime Green is to help the police solve more crime if that's what they want to do. I would suggest they put the money in the pot and buy themselves a camera. Um, we know we, we need mobile cameras. That sounds to me like a fixed option really, on a permanent basis. And we would be much better off doing the, the passes, South Park, etc. etc. In my opinion, that's what it's uh, We should be dictating, we shouldn't be being told where our camera needs to go. Yeah, yeah. Just put them off to the car, first of all. To be fair, we did ask. We said whether we wanted that. But we have two cameras, and they just need home places. So that's what we, that's what we'd be working. They could be moved again. So uh, we need one of those home places. Where they can go as well, I'd have to check that they can go there. South Park, we can't go there at the moment. Council Hodgson's the first one, Councillor Fitter. Yeah, well, we went to visit the CCTV rooms. They said they were used quite a lot to, to uh, identify criminals, potential criminals, known criminals coming into town, and therefore they could then alert the police and that. 
I was kind of wondering whether you were going to make that point um, in terms of supporting the police. Is the police, at the end of the day, are going to take action if if there is criminal activity? Um, but yeah, I'm saying why should our accountants do that? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, true that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm just to sort of end to to echo what Councillor Edwards and Councillor Warren were saying, really to say look to ask the question, what is the focus of this? And and Councillor Wilson has been so vociferous about CCTV in South Park because there is um because we we know on the south side of the park we know that there's there's a lot of issues around social behaviour and concerns for community safety. And my feeling is that these CCTV the town council funded ones are about community well-being and safety and feeling of security and and as and again i think i've said this in previous meetings as much as much as you know it, it, it's important to stop the sort of the some of the more serious organized crime that is going on the purpose that we set off and when we started this journey with cctv the town council it was about the community feeling safer i mean i'll just refer councillor harewood as frequently, I'm just saying, as frequently mentioned the fact that there needs to be a focus on the communities and not just the town centre. And I, I feel very strongly the same. And I think that if, if, if as councillors we've identified from listening to our residents where there's actually, where people don't feel safe, that should surely be the priority. That, that's my feeling about mm -hmm. it. But I, I fully take on board what Councillor Hutchinson's saying. And, uh, you know, I, I sort of, um, I can actually think of incidents of, of crime you know in in my ward which are affected by criminals coming in from from staffordshire <laughs> but um, but that's but that's a policing issue so i feel that that's that is sort of separate yeah mm -hmm. purchasing this is two cameras um, the two home positions are as I say up for debate Obviously, the, the, we, we've had three locations spoken about the one past off John Lodge, uh, Tesco, and South Park. We did mention that South, South Park, Park they, 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 at, at the moment they cannot do, they have to install a post. <laughs> they, don't, they will have asked several times. Wherever you suggest, they're going to have to go look at. So that you just be aware of that. We'll have to go and do a site visit for it. So there's one at the Travel Lodge already. 
already. These cameras come in with January. We've got a bit of planning to decide where they could go. And that's all right. Councillor Potter. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think, I, think um, I, I was going to second Councillor Livingston's uh, initial proposal, uh, sorry, proposal. But I think that, well, I was going to say that Councillor Brooke Thompson's um, assertion about Beck Lane and and the northwest of Manchester, I don't know what area, geographically, I don't know where it sits. On the compass. Yes. Northwest, yeah. I think my compass is working. Um, but the, um, but yeah, that, like having, having uh, CCTV represented on that side of town would seem like in the spirit of, of kind of trying to make it more widening the, uh, the, the, the views of that, you know, to, as Councillor Harewood and I have been saying for years and years, you know, get it out to these communities, not just in the town centre. So I think it's really important we have a second, uh, we have at least we have at least one camera that's out of the town centre. And I'll let you know on that side. Obviously, what we're just trying to discuss at the moment is the, the home location. So the yeah. two cameras will be in a specific location, and then upon council's requests can be moved to different parts of the town centre, uh, different parts of the town, different estates, neighbour passes, uh, South Park, different length potentially. Um, so at this moment, we're just looking at the two home locations um, for the, the cameras, and then councillors are then able to um, meet with the, the wards and the police, uh, discuss other locations for the cameras. Council's still forming. So some um, uh, criminal damage in what they call Pigeon Park. Well, no, not Pigeon Park. Sorry, uh, Park. <laughs> Pigeon Park somewhere else, isn't it? <laughs> um, and they weren't caught. And I sat in the CCTV room and went through trying to find these people and so on. This idea of putting a camera on uh, on a Burger King is is ridiculous in my opinion. In the ones they're not good enough unless somebody's walking right past the door of, of um, Burger King it might have some effect but just catching a car coming down these cameras just aren't of that quality as far as I know I might be totally wrong and uh, I would I second uh, Councillor Gilman's suggestion of uh, purchasing three and having three home um, sites for them I think that uh, uh, is the answer for them thank you so, oh, sorry. Excuse me, sorry, my, Mr. Mayor. I was just trying to work out whether there was a proposal before from Councillor Livingston and whether we could, we could match the motion or. Uh, I, I, I could jump in with the proposal to, to, to suggest that it's acceptable because of the principle is it's about community safety and we will buy three cameras. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there we go. Good. <laughs> 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 <Exactly. laughs> Um, that is I can't carry away. Are you happy with that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. 
So we had a proposal once again to transform the study. The principle is that cameras be practice as much as we see the discretion of the council boss, and we will practice the cameras as much. You'll have a second there, aren't you? That's a second now. I didn't hear it. Did you see that? Amen. We can't hear it. 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 We can't hear Second there. Councillor Adams, thank you very much. All those in favour? <coughs> Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, so, what I may suggest if, if people have got uh, ideas for home locations, the email I've seen, thank you, thanks, Anne Clark. Um, well, what I've, can I just, what I've heard is so where it is at the Travel Lodge underpass, the Tesco underpass, and Bex Lane be the first three home places because there can't be one in South Park at the moment if those are available. Is that the count of the council yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, as mentioned, if, if, if residents can contact you regarding um, concerns in relation to uh, potential crime hotspots, uh, you're more than welcome to, to fill a form in cameras moved. Now that there is a lot of discussion about it, should head to the next process and what's smooth the road. Okay. So, uh, item 9 is the governance review. Uh, so, now that one is um, the volunteer policies uh, to approve amendments in the above document. Councillor Bailey. Uh, yeah, as Alf proposed that we approve this, but just to say thank you to all the volunteers. Um, they look fabulous in their, in their sweatshirts. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. We talked about mental health uh, earlier. We've been talking about community. It's great for people's mental, physical health, and they're also helping to work the community. So thank you very much for that too. Just to add on that one, um, from the nature of each year, I, I noticed there was quite a, a good increase in, in our volunteers that we've got, um, helping the events officer and, and other uh, officers for making things really smoothly and just put these evos up or uh, down the stall. So uh, personally, I just want to thank all our volunteers once again. Um, <coughs> we you know, they're like us, we are more volunteers uh, through the council, so uh, it, it makes, makes the council run a lot smoother uh, in its runs. Um, uh, are you well, that's uh, proposed? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a second there for that, please. Council Lindsay. So all those in favour? Nine point two is a code of conduct again to approve the above document. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, it's nice to see that we've got um, uh, a change here to make the code of conduct the same for Cheshire East councillors as well as Maxbury Town councillors, since we have so many Cheshire East councillors in Stockton being confused about how they behave. So uh, yeah, it's nice to see that a bit of consistency brought in. Yeah, um, I'm happy about the role of principles as well, and I do try and behave myself. <laughs> no, I'll <I'm> second. <laughs> second by uh, Councillor Lindsay. All those in favour? I behave in place. Yes. Uh, nine point three is the Mayor's Handbook. Um, so obviously, as I um, took over from Councillor Wilson, um, the awful news of uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth passing. Uh, made this kind of null void. So it's just a slight amendment, um, just noting, um, well, not noting the, um, the Queen, it's just uh, HRH, just so that uh, we can enhance it uh, going forward. So I'd like to propose that. A second there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, all those in favour? Nine point four is councillor volunteer and expenses policy. Um, so our auditor, <coughs> we've got 
cap with uh, this is covered in lots of other bits, but the auditor wanted one policy. So this is one policy about expenses, and he also wanted a policy about gifts for officers or just members. So um, the policy you have would be the expense policy, but we would like to add the section out of the code of conduct for gifts for councillors to be added with it covering volunteers, councillors and officers. I hope that makes sense. So it would be one policy for volunteers, expenses and gifts for the role. Sensible. It's all clear and above board, and you know we do this voluntarily. There are, there's a, 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 an increase, obviously, I mean, we're looking at hopefully um, having our new pavilion built sometime in the next, or well, starting to be built in the next 12 months. Um, it's also interesting to note that um, some of our other town parish councils um, in the local area uh, do charge considerably more, um, and I feel uh, the amount of hard work and dedication and uh, things that we do as a town council, the amount that we charge is very, very competitive. Um, does everybody have any questions or comments about the budget to Councillor Hutchinson? Yeah, just got a question about um, <coughs> the rent that we're paying here and the and the um, room hire costs. Um, there's been a, a greater than 50% increase there. You see if you if you remember the rent, it was 12,000, we were paying for rent, and it's gone up to 25,000. And then the room hire costs are also significant. I just wonder whether it's forcing us to find alternative venues to use in this building. Already the planning, um, the, the planning <coughs> committee has moved from, from here to the library because it's cheaper. And I wonder if, you know, with a height like that, how, how do you justify that? I know Cheshire East are really short of money, but um, it's just another example of how Macclesfield Town Council is just, as well as a gritting and all the other things that we take on, um, and being and paying more and more and more. It just seems ridiculous. Yeah. To be fair, Cheshire East Council haven't come back with a figure yet. That was a figure that we that I put in. Oh. Because. <laughs> <laughs> you did made it. No, it's be I have I have met with them and we have talked about having more space in the town hall. As a as a council that's growing, um, storage is one of our big issues. Um, and it, it the the rent has been twelve thousand pounds. The rent the lease runs out May twenty four next year. There will be an increase just due to that bills have gone up, etc. So we expect an increase anyway. We put 25,000 in because the rangers need more storage for things like rotivators, mowers, for while well, they do more of the wildflower, etc. We've got a quote for 5,000 for that, so we have their own storage container. <coughs> then it was just an estimate of what it might cost to rent another office upstairs and to uh, license part of the butter market. So it's not a fixed cost yet and um, we may be able to get the figure before the budget is um, approved in December. But we, we we need more storage, we need more room. Is that true of room hire as well? Step, not stand, room hire. Well, there it is. The room hire... 5,000 to... It was 4,500, yes. and then, then 5,000, and now it's estimated to be 7,000. Yes. We have, we have more meetings, we do more events, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's an estimated cost. I will let you know how much we've spent so far on room hire, but I think it's getting up to 5,000 already. So. Are there other venues like the library where it would actually be cheaper for us to have this meeting? Potentially, we could look. But it's, 
studies are difficult. We found that when we were looking for things for the mayor, the places for the mayor to have events, and there is a lack of places that hold, you know, space that holds. Because we probably could find somewhere else, like the senior citizens hall, the library, that kind of thing. But that all, all that money goes back to Cheshire East anyway. It's just cheaper. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, do we have any contingency plans if uh, there is a reorganisation of Cheshire East and they, for instance, move the library into the town hall or close um, various things? Do, hmm? I know it's way in the future, but I, I do wonder if we consider what might happen. We, well, yes, I mean, obviously the town centre manager lets us know if there's any places she thinks, well, that's up for that, you know. We'd love the part that, you know, the on the car park, the, the painting decorate place, that'd be a great place to be, but we found it difficult to get the fire to cost, and it leaves a lot of work doing to it. We have got the pavilion being built, so that might be a contingency, um, and we're aware of, you know, different bits and pieces. Can I just come in about the paint place? I think Wendy Ware just about to sign on the dotted line for it. Right, sorry. But we, um, yes. We, we, we look, but we've not, we haven't got an absolute plan of where we would go. Fortunately, we can all work from home. <laughs> so, but yeah, we don't have a plan as such in place. Thank you. In some respects, the town council's a little bit like a growing family. So, you know, we definitely need more bedrooms if we've got a growing family. We do lots more event events. Uh, they're free to the public and we'll need more space. The, the, the room upstairs, the, the office upstairs is a hazard at the moment. There's so much stuff lying around. So we do need, we do need storage. Certainly we need storage for the fantastic work that the rangers do. Um, the library's not closing and nor is this building at the moment. So we cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, and I, I propose, well, or I suggest that uh, the town park goes away from Haggle. <laughs> 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 and that would give me a prize to Haggle with you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Any other comments or questions, Councillor Hammond? Can I make a comment for you? Yeah. I think it's a sadness No, it's, it's uh, a fair comment, Councillor Hyman. To be honest as well, I think it would, it would be nice to see the town hall in, in the town council control. Uh, obviously, that means going to have a little Cheshire East. Well done. Just to say that the rent includes electricity bills, gas bills, phone bills, you know, Wi Fi. So it, it does include, uh, personally, I think it's quite competitive for a town centre location. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Really, just just to weigh in on the uh, on the rent debate or the discussion, what 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 has really reassured me, and I would reassure residents, is that when when we've been talking about the place of where the where the town council sits, we recognise really that we are our role was to we work with a, a whole, you know, m with many different organisations and different groups, you know, charities. Uh, and actually, really, sort of, the, the real opportunity is, is in getting closer to residents. And, and if, if we're going to be in the town hall, it's about giving the residents more access to the town hall. I'm not necessarily interested in owning, in owning massive bits of building. I'm far more interested in value for money for the residents and a smart town council that actually... So, so for example, the ability to kind of share working space and storage space, and I'm sure the clerk knows this very well, with our organisations will be hugely valuable. And so I just think that that's, that's what, I, what I like appreciate about this budget is it's take, take into account the fact that we, are, that we are part of the ecology of the town. We're not just a separate 
through in a, in a place. Um, I just wanted it noting that the photocopying bills have gone down and hopefully that's because I'm using my iPad and not getting 100 pages printed for every meeting. So I would encourage all the councillors to go paperless. I think that's a really important if we can. Um, yeah. On the back of that, I do know uh, there are quite a few other um, devices that are paperless. I'd like to go paperless, but it's uh, obviously yeah. a bit different chair in the meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, are there any other comments about the, the proposed budgets? No. Um, so this has to do with sort of finance. Okay, finance and services, services. and I'm back from council for approval in December. I think it's it, it's worth noting that the the loan repayment is in there for the pavilion as well, with a potential twenty thousand pound coming back from earned income. That's very conservative figure. Yeah. I'm a pessimist. Um, but yeah, that that so that it, it comes to um, another ten pounds sixty four eighty nine pence per month per household. Again, I'd still say we're, we're going to be very competitive compared to our uh, neighbouring parishes. Um, so obviously that'll go to uh, Services and Finance Committee uh, and then back to the council in December. Um, I would hope that Cheshire's Council would uh, come back to us in relation to rental charges um, by the time it does come back. Item 11 is the outcome of the audit. Um, it's just noted in the report for the information. I don't know if you've got any Yeah, I just want to budget. say one thing on the audit that um, they sent me. Box four is a box that has what we paid in wages last year and what we paid in wages this year. And there was a difference of about £30,000. And you had to explain it. So I explained that we had more staff and that we'd gone from part time staff to full time staff. And um, I said them all the figures in the spreadsheet, and I, I said the job titles and job descriptions, and it still came back that I had not adequately explained the thirty thousand pound difference. So I wanted to explain it to you, but um, I don't know how else I could have explained it. Well, I, I think over the last four months we've seen the, uh, well, the, the additional thirty thousand pounds has gone in the relation uh, to new staff members, uh, working hard, and also. To invite the auditor to the yes. councillors to be, uh, be showing what's uh, what's been spent. Does so anybody have any comments or questions about the audit? Councillor anyway. Just to say thank you to the Rattnall group for the hard work and it's money well spent considering all the free events we do in the town. So yeah, definitely enjoyed the audit as well. Thank you to that. Mm -hmm. Item 12, we've got a proposal for parks in the play area. Um, the addition of to services. Yeah. Um, we weren't calling it, so this is the only uh, general item we needed uh, a decision, so it's come to the council for us to decide. Um, it's a proposal for Ashgrove Park. Uh, councillor, what's it that you want to read on this as a councillor? Yeah, so, very, yeah. <coughs> sort of then, I was re I'm really quite happy to, to, to read this. In our, in our report actually it was um, unfortunately it was the same just um, you know, with all the awful things going on in the world it's really nice to sort of see that we're, we're getting on um, the playground building but yeah so just the um, uh, just to say really that the um, to put forward the proposal so Ashgrove Park is it, just not far from Moss, Moss Lane, so in the south, it, definitely in the south ward, and like some of our other playgrounds, which sits on the, and on uh, between different wards, um, and so um, a few a few years ago, myself and Councillor Wilson went and um, spoke to the pupils at Ashgrove School, which are just next to the park, and asked them what they would like for their area, and they came back with this. They said they wanted. Um, to renovate their, their little park that, that, that they all use. Um, they wanted a McDonald's there, but we, <laughs> we struck that off because, you know, not, 
not not in our powers to build a McDonald's in a, especially in a park. Um, but they they talked about uh, about the fact how they use it and they had some great ideas. And from that seed, we um, we worked with the the town ranger at the time to develop a proposal for a safe and sort of uh, usable park that will be well loved. And I'm just and just to sort of add the detail to this, I think. I think you'll all appreciate in the different wards, we've got the big parks, the West Parks and the South Parks, but for a number of families, especially with young children, having a park, a smaller park closer to them is, is important. And the uh, equipment that was put there in the past wasn't really suitable for, 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 for its audience, really. So um, based on the fact we, this, is, this is what the residents, young and old, have asked for, um, I think you know, this, this, is, this is a perfect example of continuing with our park building pro process. Really. Thank you. So, are there any questions or comments? Sorry, I can answer some questions. Councillor Warren. Um, probably a few questions for the town clerk there before I suggest an amendment. Um, the £20,000 for West Park and for South Park. Mm -hmm. Historically, all these this hundred thousand pounds have gone to the pocket park, hasn't it? So my question is really, when we're looking at developing a pocket park, as uh, Neil's just mm -hmm. explained, why have we not sourced the other forty thousand from somewhere else, such as reserves? Because mm -hmm. um, it didn't say in the budget what reserves were, but they obviously are quite substantial because we're dealing with forty-five thousand pounds in interest. Um, could we not use those 40,000 out of reserves for those two park outings because those benefit the whole of Macclesfield because people use both those large parks. And the second point is I don't think that ward budgets should be included in renovation of pocket parks. We've got clear policy on what we do around parks. And I think it, especially in the, the South Ward, um, the ward members' budgets are quite important to use as they see fit in those communities. And to tie them up in a park, I think, is wrong. So I would propose, and I'm quite happy to be shot down if, if people want to, that we don't allow the council to use their ward budgets in renovations of parks, be they big parks or the pocket parks, for the very reason you kind of got to repeat to pay for all. And it, would, it, would be, it, would, it would deny the ward councils to, to maybe input for £500 pounds for the group in that year because they've already put it. I'm waffling on to someone should have, but that's my proposal. So the, um, I totally understand that it looks like that. The 4000 coming from the ward budget to the south is to pay for a playhouse. And if they do the playhouse at the same time is this, there's more economies of scale that while we're working here, we'll stick your playhouse in and you'll get it a bit cheaper so we don't have to keep coming back. That's what I'm trying to say. So that, it wasn't, it looks like what you said, but they'd actually went to the school and it was a playhouse they had asked for and that's what their 4,000 has gone to. The playhouse is in the park. Just, just, just to expand on that, um, I do believe that Southwall Council has had uh, use their ward budget on a playhouse. So that's what has already been uh, approved by the finance committee um, previously. Am I correct in that? Yes. Yes. So well, that, that's to go into the park, that chair. That is a, a, res yes, a, resp a the park. response of the, the residents uh, for a, a playhouse room. I, I, I understand your respect your uh, comments about um, going to the park, but that's years working for budget yes. previously. Yes. Yeah, uh, and I get that, but I still disagree with it, mm -hmm. because you're upgrading a park, and we're only spending 40,000 in this park, rather than the, sorry, six, rather than the, the, the normal yes. numbers. Can I go again? Yeah. So, in, when I got here, it was normally 50,000 pounds on two little, like, so Weston got 50, and 
while it walked got 50, and then Windmill Park got 100 because it kind of straddled the border, and then after that, um, it was the idea of getting the park more accessible. So we had accessible equipment put in South Park. The reason there was 20,000 went to West Park was to put accessible roundabout in there that needed changing and widen the gate. So it's it's become more fractured, if you like, than just done one part. There is 60,000 left in the budget this year, and like you say, it was reserved. So um, we could pay for the whole of this and the playhouse out of that, and then they can have their, the council could have their water budget back. That's what I'm proposing, that you can put a farm on our corner. <laughs> <laughs> and can, can I just suggest it would be good, because the ward budgets were are quite new still, to have a group of us come up with maybe, not rules, but it was re it's been really difficult to know it was just do something for your ward and what you might think for your ward you might think differently so I think it'd be good to get together and have some ideas about now that we've been in it for four years. Any comments or questions? So can I just clarify with the <coughs> town park are you suggesting that goes as like a subgroup or goes to a committee? Is that a, a subgroup that made a proposal yeah. to finance maybe. Yeah. I'm sure they can discuss that at a different point. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, um so Council Warren has made a proposal uh, to have the full forty four thousand pounds for the improvements to the play area and the uh, playhouse. Parks budget, leaving the South Ward or Ward budget. Um, or do you want them to have the full 60,000 left? I think she had the full 60,000. There is other things they want to do in that park, and one of them is that they, when they went to a site visit, some teenagers said we'd just like somewhere to sit. Yeah. Oh. They don't have anywhere to sit, so they could spend it. Thank you. Chair, uh, thank you. I'd, I'd, I, if I'm allowed to, I would be very happy to second that proposal. If you, if, if mm. members don't think that's against sort of <laughs> acting in, in the interests of my ward, I don't know. But um, quite some pure resolution. Yeah, well, quite. But that's an, it's, it, and and I'd just just like to thank Councillor Warren for, for making that point. But of course, the, the point is is that we, as as the clerk has, has made there has, has said, there's there's a number of uh, ways that we could reinvest that money into into either the park or the notion of play, and just to, just to say again, speak up for my for my ward. Like we are, we are champion players. We are the best. We, it's been it's been uh, I think it's been mentioned in national newsletters that we're really good at playing. So uh, yeah, so I think on that basis, it's kind of you know it's important that to I, I had a note say that we're really good at playing. <laughs> So I had to get that out, but I, I, if it's okay, I'll second that proposal, thanks. Okay, so we've had a proposal from Council Warren, which has been seconded by Council Fossett, to use the remaining £60,000 from our Parks and Playing Area budget on our South Ward, in particular at Ashgrove Park. Um, all those in favour of that proposal? Item 13, uh, car parking consultation. Um, always a contentious issue, car parking. Um, obviously, Cheshire's Council um, took on car parking from different um, borough councils when Cheshire's Council um, was um, accepted. Uh, Cheshire's Council are looking at changing some of the uh, car park rates uh, in our town, um, town car parks. So it's just to consider the proposals uh, and then have a reply back to Cheshire's Council in relation to the car parking review. Um, so obviously you can't comment about any other towns or parishes in our um, immediate neighbourhood, just concentrating on that this morning. Um, any comments and questions? <coughs> Councillor Bennett-Bennett. So it seems to 
two families, they're used to the same thing. Um, yeah, just a general comment really that I, I think it's unfair that, I know you said that you can't comment on other towns, but I think it's unfair for any charges to go up in Macclesfield when others don't pay anything. So I think it's about equity across the board that people pay at a similar amount. Some of the car parking charges are actually going down. Um, I would urge residents to, to comment on the consultation. Um, and I have not said that I have worked in different parts of the country and travelled to different parts of the country. The car parking is still incredibly cheap, cheap in Macclesfield. Um, so do comment and try and walk more. Just pick up on what um, Councillor Freddy Wakes just said. Um, there is free car parks don't exist. There is no free car parking. We subsidise those free park, car parks because those car parks have to be maintained. They have to um, have their um, enforcement work done by paid uh, staff, which all comes out of car parking revenue. Um, but having said that, again, as Sarah said. Um, I think the, the car parking charge is going to be put up once in Cheshire East's existence. Um, so, obviously, the, the, as uh, has been already said this evening, Cheshire East is uh, looking for additional revenue to, to fill its uh, gap in its budget. So, again, I would urge residents to have their voice and, and use this consultation as a, an opportunity to voice their displeasure really and to support the bringing of the charges in the other, other car parks. We see, I think it's nearly half the car parks are at no cost to the user at the moment, which uh, doesn't seem right to me. Myself, um, obviously, we've got a town centre working recovery group that are trying to encourage people into the town centre. Um, car parking, um, if you can find it free, is fantastic. But um, as we're trying to encourage people um, working into town, um, potentially some of these car parking uh, charge increases uh, could prevent that. Uh, could prevent those people going to out of town retail. We've got library, we've got banks, uh, banks for. And also there are other um, shopping shopping areas uh, not too far away. Um, as has been mentioned by councillors, uh, it'd be fantastic if residents that are watching this um, 
are able to, to comment on the consultation. I do believe there is links on the social medias or the town yeah. council website. Uh, so follow those links, fill a consultation in, uh, and you know, ignore the reports of the responses to Cheshire's Council related to the, um, the car parking uh, proposals. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, look, we had the car consultation done about Macclesfield and uh, and one of the main things that came out of that was that there's too many car parks in Macclesfield. <clears throat> when I'm trying to drive across town, then I'm, I'm in the traffic jam. There's a potential to earn a fortune from all those people there. So I'm quite happy for these charges to go. We're talking about trying to create active travel within the town and then we, we're you know, trying to worry about everything. So uh, there's, there's so many cars around the Macclesfield that this could be could create quite a big income for uh, for Cheshire East, and uh, and hopefully it'll do that. And, and I don't know whether the, the charges, which are perhaps some of the lowest in, Ch in Cheshire East, are actually putting people off coming to town. I wouldn't have thought that. I, I wouldn't have thought that people need to come into town because they're attracted to something. They're not being put off, I don't think, by by uh, the parking charges. And there's plenty of places to park. But we need, if we're looking to the future, we really want peripheral car parks and then ways of, of encouraging active travel to get into town. So I don't think there's really anything to fear in this. The only thing that really looks annoying on this is, is paying something like 60p rather than 50p. So if you're paying in cash, then it's, it's a bit awkward for people. But I imagine now on all these car parks, you'd be paying in card on these car parks. So uh, I don't think we have to worry too much about the motorist in this. Um, it's a good way of, of uh, generating income. And, but of course, that needs to be applied right across Cheshire East. But now we're not in a position to do that. And there should be parking charges right across. Um, and that's the way in which we're going to get some income to, for highways to improve uh, cycle lanes and pedestrian walkways in the future. So maybe the motorists can pay that and, and that, that will help us to, to promote active travel. Item 14 is the South Park Pavilion.
The second part of the report covers the way we're going to procure the building, which Council has already approved, which is a two-stage tender. The, no, the report just confirms that we believe that what we're doing is in accordance with the standard of ordinance of the Council. Uh, there's a specialist bit about non-breaking subcontractors. I'm happy to explain that in detail to any Council who really wishes to look. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I do know what a sub non-breaking subcontractor is. Uh, I think there won't be any, so I don't think it's a question, because what we would like our contractor to do is to be able to select locally, but from the widest possible range of contractors, to get the best value. We think by doing that, we'll probably be able to reduce some of the costs. Uh, third part is on sponsorship, where there is a sponsorship document, which I think we've been asked to approve. And I'm happy to take any questions. All I'd like to say uh, in relation to the sponsorship options, um, the way it's been said is, is nice that it's local and safe to Macclesfield. I think um, it gives businesses, um, potential people as well, the option to um, to invest in our, in our pavilion uh, going forward. Um, and all being well, that uh, some of these options do get uh, taken up. Um, has anybody else got any comments, questions? I do like the names of the um, the sponsorship packages that are all related to Macclesfield and just really to any businesses around there who are looking to to invest in the future and leave a legacy that they have a look at them as well. I'm sure they'd be available on our website. Yeah, just, just one thing. Uh, one thing I forgot to say, one of the things we're also doing is have a good look at the running costs of the building when you add the maintenance costs of it plus what income we would think we would generate from it. Because I think at the moment we feel that the current proposals from Council are slightly understated in both. So we would like to be a bit more certain on that before we proceed, which we should have done by the next Council meeting. Okay, a bit of time for and then I'll take uh, Council to visit. I just wanted to let everybody know it was Rachel who came up with all those names and designed it. <laughs> so, credit where it's due. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just to, to, to further echo what what Councillor Bennett Wake was saying, really, that the um, you know Rails South Park, as Rails Park as was, was built by sort of uh, very kind, benevolent business owners, um, investing in their community. So you know, just reaching out to biz business in in the area to to do the same again this century and build something that will last for another hundred years, in the same way that. Riles, I can't remember what his name was, <laughs> Mr. Riles did back in the day, you know, and I think I think that's that's that would be a great example of business working really well in Macclesfield. Any other comments or questions? No. So um, we have got um, to approve potentially the sponsorship. Um, would you like a proposal from a councillor? Councillor Lindsay, propose that we adopt the uh, sponsorship opportunities. Seconder, Councillor Bennett All those in favour of adopting the uh, sponsorship package? Uh, item 15 is the Town Council strategy. Um, so each year we look at um, how we're going to um, go through as, as the Town Council, what we're looking at uh, achieving. And we've got a, a, a well thought out strategic plan uh, sorry, for the next four years um, going forward. Hopefully, lots more events. Um, as I was discussing with the events officer, um, a neighbouring um, council uh, has five, I think, five events officers for four events, 12 by a year. Uh, so I think we can do very well um, with, with what we've got. Um, anybody have any comments or questions about the strategic plan? Can I just um, encourage councillors to look at the boards uh, on the way out? Um, this is a we looked at the progress so far of the green initiatives, uh, the historic strategy, and we've done a red, amber, green rating. We, we were able to take these to the Nature Meet You event, and people could have a look at them. Um, and I think it's a, a nice way of showing that we've actually done quite a lot of work, part of the Eco Summit. Um, part of the survey, 
And so we have been implementing plan documents and things, so that's, that's good news. Um, going forward, um, I'm just wondering if we could potentially put the uh, EK summit in as page 28, which is the promoting active travel and public transport, because I think we've suggested that we might be having an EK summit next year around um, travel and transport. <coughs> My strategy is our strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a draft version. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can take that now if you want to propose the proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Second the obviously I'll put it for us and go when we got to the notes. Just try any comments and questions along from Councillor Hodgkinson. Yeah, just let you know about um, some an initiative. Um, it uh, involves Jeff Finlow, who was previously on the board of Macclesfield Town Football Club. Um, and when the club folded, uh, Jeff had a huge amount of memorabilia from the old club. And um, in my connections with the Silton Sports Trust, I got in touch with, with Jeff and had conversations with him and had his email and he's uh, what, what he really wants to do is uh, leave us a legacy he wants to leave all this memorabilia uh, and have it on display so I then um, got in touch with Emma Anderson who's the director of the Silk Museum and, um, and she was very keen on that idea because they've got a lot of silks which are related to the silk men and I was able to put those two in touch with each other and uh, to discuss their plans for, for the museum. And then this, this Wednesday, <coughs> I'm meeting with Emma. Jeff is now down in Cornwall, so he's not coming up to the meeting, but I have spoken to him several times on the, on the phone, and I mean, I've got him on WhatsApp now, so, so he's, he can contact me very easily. But I'm meeting with Emma Anderson, the director of the Silk Museum, uh, on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock, along with Patrick Birch, who is the very closely associated with the club and its history, with Bob Trafford, who's working at the club, and Rob Wilson, who's the secretary of the Silverton Supporters Trust. So, because Jeff and Emma have had these conversations about his vision for that museum, then uh, and Emma being quite keen, I'm hoping that that meeting will uh, put in, in place a long-term future for, for Silkman Memorial memorabilia uh, to be on display at the Silk Museum. And, and I'm sure that that will attract more people into the Silk Museum and to see all the other uh, amazing exhibits that they've got there, really. I was there about two months ago on that open day, it was fantastic. So, uh, so, so that's something that, through my link with the Macclesfield Town Council, that hopefully we'll be able to take a little bit of kudos from if it comes off, and uh, and to have a good display there for the for the people of Macclesfield. And Jeff, he's got so much of this stuff that he wants to see it as a as a change in every couple of months, so to keep people interested in in coming in and seeing more and more. Okay, so you may have other people in Macclesfield who've got uh, uh, things which are linked to the history of the club who want to contribute it to the to the museum, belong it to the museum. So I'll keep you informed um, after the meeting on Wednesday, and um, if it goes well, and hopefully we can publicise that as well as a, on our website to uh, support the Silk Museum and uh, and the heritage of the of the old club. Thank you very much. Um, just to add on that, um, I know there's been various different um, bits of uh, memorabilia that uh, I'm aware of in the old football now. Um, so it's essentially to see some of that uh, available in the flesh should be uh, on that menu soon. If uh, the line is um, there quite often. Um, Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased actually. 
through the sort of all strategic, strategic aim. And I noticed as um, councillors are talking, they're actually smiling. So most of our strategic teams aims what we feed into is about really, I want to say, improving happiness, which is a word that we don't use very often because the world can seem a bit grim <coughs> and a bit nasty and a bit cold and a bit post-COVID and everything else that's going on in the world. But we managed to put on a lot of activities, free activities for families. We support the systems advice. We support lots of different groups and activities that enhance people's lives. And that all contributes, you're talking about play this evening, and that all contributes to people's mental and physical well-being. And it's not just about going to the doctors, I've got one here, if, if you get to see one, sorry. <laughs> um, it's not just about that health, it's not just about that, it's about your general well-being, it's about, you know, you talked about car parks and you're going to have to travel more, it all contributes to our health. And in the winter months when we can get a bit glum and a bit dark and a bit cold, I think it's really important that we do think about our health. We do get out there and come to town centre, town council events and use our parks and enjoy our wildflowers and it, it does contribute and we look after one another. Thank you. Oh, wow. uh, thank you. I, I, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I, I went to one of the things for the circulation and maybe this is not the place to um, uh, question them as this is not their thing. I was, while it was so impressive, there wasn't one woman's picture in a woman's town that was built on women's work. And I, 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 I'm unhappy with it because I don't think it wasn't thought of or they were not important enough or the jobs were not important enough or the contributions were not important enough. I do not think this is the case. And I wish that when they make a further um, uh, walk or whatever they do, and we go on different things, that they have the contribution of the women who worked in the silk industry. I failed to see that, and there was nobody to address. I'm hoping to address that, because I feel if we go on without doing it, we will not do it. This town was made mainly on women employees. They were men, but they didn't question women employees. I'm sure of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hardy. Any other, any other questions or comments about this procedure? Before I close the, the meeting, Involvement as well. Uh, hopefully, the hard work has paid off. Um, so, hopefully, we'll be able to um, keep the good news out on the uh, social media and uh, so fingers crossed that we uh, emulate uh, all the increasing successes that we've had uh, previously. Uh, I know that over the past few years, we've always increased our award. Uh, I don't know what the next.
special is, but it's, I'm sure you'll find out on uh, on Thursday. Um, so final agenda item by some sixteen is the date, time and place of the next meeting. So the uh, next meeting before council will be held on the eleventh of December two thousand twenty-three, seven pm here in Town Hall. Um, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, you've done a quite a, a good job with the agenda this evening. 